Hello, thanks for joining. In this video, I'm going to show you two main websites that are used for cryptocurrency technical analysis. These two main websites are Coinigy and TradingView. Uh, they both do come with free memberships, however, Coinigy only lasts for 30 days and then after that, you have to get the Pro Trader for $18 per month. Or you can just use a different email and then just continually use the 30 day free trial if you want to do that as well. But you just have to, every time you do that, you have to redo all your charts and indicators. And after a certain time, I kind of got tired of doing that. So I just got the pro trader in the end, but you can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, for the trading view, uh, they do come with a free membership as well, but you're just limited to the number of charts um, per layout, server side alerts or indicators per chart, for example. I would recommend getting both of these, um, but it's really up to you. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. For example, TradingView does have more USD pairs compared to Coinigy. However, Coinigy's platform is actually meant specifically for cryptocurrencies, which is pretty nice because they do provide you with more exchanges which can, which can be found on this sidebar right here. These are like all the exchanges that CoinEG provides. Whereas TradingView provides you with a lot less cryptocurrency exchanges, but they are adding them continually. So depending on what you what you trade, some exchanges might not might not be on TradingView, so you, you won't be able to view the graphs from those exchanges but you'll be able to see them on, on Coinigy's platform. So it kind of depends what you're kind of doing. If you're trading mostly Bitcoin and the major altcoins, then I would just recommend getting TradingView. But if you're trading more obscure cryptocurrencies on weird exchanges that people never really hear about, then I would recommend Coinigy then. And if you really want to get into this, I would just get both of them. They're, 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 they're both good. So in this video, I'll show you how to use Coinigy. However, once you master Coinigy, you can easily transfer those skills over to TradingView, just because the trade the, the layouts are pretty much exactly exactly the same. So once you master one platform, you pretty much master them all. So after signing into Coinigy, you'll come to a screen that looks like this, and when you first sign in, the screen might look kind of scary because there's a bunch of random letters over here, green sticks are over here with red sticks, and numbers going everywhere, buttons everywhere. So in this video, I'm just going to kind of break this down for you, just so you kind of get a general overview of how this works. And once you kind of understand how this, how everything works and why it's laid out this way, you feel a lot more comfortable. So I'll first start in the top left hand corner here, uh, this button right here, is to control the, the time for the candlesticks. So for example, if you wanted 15 minute candlesticks, you'd click 15 minutes right there. And then that means that each candlestick represents 15 minutes. Uh, generally speaking, the most common time frames that traders use or that I, I've seen them use is the 30 minute, one hour, four hour, 12 hour, one day, one week, and one month. Generally speaking, using bigger time frames is usually better just because you get a better picture of, of the overall trend and what it's doing. So the next button over helps control what the candlesticks look like. So this is the bar candlesticks, normal candlesticks, hollow candlesticks. This one's called Hakanashi candlesticks. And I use this one just to help me place my stops on uptrends. So that's what I usually use Hakanashi for. This, this one's called line. This is a line chart. And this one's just like an area one. I generally don't use this, don't use these ones. I usually just use the candlesticks and the Hakanashi. The next button over 
help controls the chart properties. So this is just where the, the style section, so you can control the colors of your candlesticks, borders, wicks, your scales. I usually don't mess around with these too much. Control your background color and your time zone. So that one's pretty basic. So the next button over is where it gets a little bit more exciting. This is, this is where you find your indicators. So you just click indicators and this is just a list of all the indicators that you can pick or you can just type it in here. So for example, I'll just type in moving average, which are, these are pretty common. A lot of people use moving averages for trading. Uh, they generally use more than, than one. A lot of people use four, three, I, I, I like to use four, but in this example, I'll, I'll just use two. Uh, another another common indicator would be Ichimoku Cloud. Boilinger Bands, Boilinger Bands, there, yeah. So you just click it, and then these to show over here. And if you want to control which one's visible and which one's not, you just click on this eyeball icon up right here and the next button over are like the formatting for those indicators so if you wanted to change the colors or change the data that it takes in then you just press this button right here and then you can change the colors here so if you wanted to change this it's called each move cloud. So if you want to change this red cloud into something, I don't know, it's a little bit more trippy, or change it to pink, you just click that right there. Oh, this one's for the baseline, so. Where is Ichimoku cloud? There it is. So if you want to change this Ichimoku cloud to a different color, you just can do pink or like blue. So that's how you change the colors. And, and this is where you, uh, for the input, so. If you wanted to change any of the other indicators, you would just click the same button. So if you want to change the Boilinger bands, just turn the Ichimoku cloud off. If you want to change the Boilinger bands, you just click this button here. And usually the Boilinger bands are kind of gross. This line's sometimes too thick on CoinEG. So you kind of want to just thin that line. And I usually like to make them like equal. equal thickness and another shorter way to click uh, on the settings for each indicator is just to click the indicator two times and then it'll bring up the screen right here and it's pretty much just exactly the same thing change it change the colors change the thickness uh, if you either want uh, for example the median line of the Borlinger band if you want that visible or not visible or if you wanted to change the length of it Um, but generally speaking, the Boilinger bands, how they how the settings are, is usually pretty good. The default settings. Uh, let me just change this. Change this cloud. For, change the Boilinger bands first, just so it's easier to see. There we go. So what the Boilinger band means on the on the standard. On the standard settings means that the price there's a 95 percent confidence interval that the price is in between these boilinger bands so that's how you kind of how they you can you, how you can kind of use them um, but you also use them uh, for squeezes like this so when boilinger bands squeeze this means that the the market is going to decide one way or the other which way this price action will go and in this case this price action went down so once it broke broke you can see it was in the downtrend you could actually enter a short here short here and then you'd use other support and resistant lines to find your exit points so that's how you kind of use one of your bands with other other indicators and, and trading techniques like supporting resistant lines which are also very important 
So that's how you get the indicators. Another other common indicators are RSI, MACD, and it's pretty much exactly the same. You just change the settings here, or if you want it to disappear, you just press this eyeball icon there. So the next button over is the compare button. So if you wanted to compare another cryptocurrency to Bitcoin, you would just type it in here. So I'll just type in Stratus for an example. So if you wanted to compare Bitcoin to Stratus, you just click this and then it would overlay onto, onto the chart. So this is actually Coinage's, or I mean not Coinage, yeah, Stratus. This is Stratus uh, chart. I actually don't use it that much, but if you wanted to dis get it disappear, you just press the X button right here and then it'll take it out. The next button is the blockchain data button. And this just tells you the mining difficulty, market capitalization, coins outstanding, rewards, reward size, and it has it for every, every cryptocurrency. So it's pretty handy, especially the mining difficulty. You actually use that uh, to trade in cryptocurrency. So that's really important. Market capitalization is also very important. Reward size for, for, for the miners is also very important. So that's what that button does. The next one over uh, is your set alert button. So after, if you wanted to get notified by either uh, have the screen, have CoinG notify you on your computer or or to notify you on your phone, you would use this button right here. So in this example, if you wanted to get alert at 12,000, you would just click that button and then you can actually drag this to the price that you want, or you can type the price in right here. So when you click the button, it'll, this will go from the data button right here and then automatically shift over to the alerts. And you you can manually type in the price that you want your, this alert to be set. And you can choose the, the sound of it as well. So if you wanted some kind of alarm or or just to use a default, I that's, that's where you pick it there. And then you just press set alert. And yeah, so now now an alert request has been added and once Bitcoin hits $12,000, 12, $12, I'll get a notification on my cell phone and get a notification on Coinage itself. So the next button over is just the full screen mode so you can just click it and then it just takes up the full screen of your of your monitor and just to exit out you just press escape on your keyboard and it goes back to the normal size so the next button over are just to go forward and backward in time just kind of like on, on microsoft word so if you just want to go back or forward you just do that the next button over takes a picture of the graph that you drew so you just click it and you can either copy the link and post that link anywhere. You can save it onto your computer or you can tweet it out with this button here. The next buttons over are just your save and, and load buttons. So if you wanted to save your chart, you just click here, save as, type it in. And if you wanted to load a chart that you saved, you just click this button here. And these are all your save charts right here. So next, I'm just gonna show you what these buttons and what, what this means right here. So this is your order book and how this works is this is your to buy orders and this is your sell orders. So if I have Bitcoin and I want to sell at a certain price, it'll go into this order book right here. But if I wanted to buy Bitcoin at a certain price, it would go into this, into the buy, buy order book. So for example, at the price of 11,451, someone's buying $226,000 worth of Bitcoin. And at the price, and so this is how, yeah. So 
at the price of 11,451, 11, someone's buying $574 worth of Bitcoin. And on the opposite end, at 11,452, someone's selling 0.32 Bitcoin, at, which is worth $2,514 US. And so that's how this order books goes. So the next point over is just your trade. So you can use something called APIs and APIs allows you to trade. Say, for example, you have an account on Bitrix or Binance, Bitfinex, you can use your APIs and link it up to your CoinEG account under your settings. So you just click settings and API and then you can just copy those keys from the other exchanges to CoinEG and then you'll be able to control your buy and order styles using CoinEG. I generally don't use that service. I just use the exchanges to buy and sell. However, there, that is an option. I just don't do it just for security reasons and because there is a lag between the exchange and to CoinEG. So there's sometimes there's like a four to five second lag from the time the information gets from the exchange to CoinEG. And if you're day trading, for example, that can actually be kind of detrimental to you because you kind of want the fastest trading, uh, fastest trading information that, that you can possibly get. So yeah, that's just how you use your API if you wanted to trade on CoinEG. Uh, the next button over is your alerts button. So that's what I showed you over here. So when you click alerts, it prints it over here and then you can type in the price or you can move this price alert button up or down on the graph and change the sound right here. The next one is the economy of, of, of a particular uh, token so for example Bitcoin and then this gives you kind of small synopsis of what it is and it's kind of for ETH carrying complete smart contracts platform and it gives you the total supply total circulating supply the total available supply and the credit market cap and it's all it's always really important to look at the total circulating supply and the available supply when you're trading these cryptocurrencies because the available supply can greatly influence what the price it is in in Bitcoin and as well as USD. USD just because if there's more tokens available, that means that the price will be a lot lower, even though the market cap will be really high and vice versa. And the next one over is just to write notes and to save notes. 